punishments have existed since the beginning of time, handed out as a way to deal with those who have broken the law, but also used as a way to deter others from doing the same. While punishments such as jail time and fines are commonplace today, history is littered with some truly horrifying examples of punishments that are twisted in their creativity and show that the human ability to inflict suffering upon others is truly unlimited. Here are my choices for the five worst punishments of all time. Number five, the brazen bull. Also known as the bronze bull or Sicilian bull, this gruesome contraption was designed in ancient Greece as a punishment and execution device. It was made entirely from bronze, and was crafted into the shape and size of a real-life bull. It was hollowed out on the inside, and contained a door on its side that was big enough to fit a man through. A condemned criminal, or simply anyone whom its owner wanted to punish, would be placed inside the bull, with the door shut behind him. A roaring fire would be set beneath the bronze bull, effectively turning it into a scorching hot oven, slowly roasting the poor individual trapped inside. Incense would be placed inside to mask the stench of burning flesh, and in a sickening twist, its creator installed a series of tubes and acoustic pipes into the head of the bull which were designed to convert the howling screams of the man roasting inside into something similar to the bellowing of an angry bull. The disturbing device was said to have been created by Perilus of Athens, who travelled to Sicily in an attempt to win favour with Phalaris, the ruler of the city of Acragas, who was believed to be a cruel tyrant. Thinking that such a man might be impressed by his creation, Perilos was confident that he would profit from the trip, however even this cruel dictator was disgusted by the contraption. He asked Perilos to crawl inside and demonstrate the sound to him, so as to prove that his invention worked. Perilos agreed, however upon entering the bull, the door was shut behind him, and a fire was set. The tyrant yelled to the terrified Perilos locked inside, Let the music master be the first to play. Perilos did indeed demonstrate that his complex system of acoustic pipes worked, and his screams of pain and terror were converted into the roars of a bull. Perilos was spared death inside the bull, eventually being released from the chamber before he could succumb to the heat. However, instead of receiving a reward for his creation as expected, he would later be thrown to his death from a steep hill. Despite being sickened by the device, Phalaris kept the bull and used it on criminals and traitors, and according to the story he even converted the scorched bones of the bull's victims into braces. The brazen bull was especially useful as a deterrent, as all executions were carried out in public, and such a spectacle was likely to have discouraged anyone who might have been considering a life of crime. Number 4. The Rat Torture Rats have a long history of being used to inflict pain and suffering upon torture victims. During the 1500s, the Tower of London was known to contain a cell which had earned the name Dungeon of the Rats. Prisoners would be placed in a cell which was located below the high watermark of the River Thames and engulfed in darkness. As the tide of the Thames began to flow in, the hordes of rats which populate the banks of the river would rush into the cell, tormenting its unfortunate occupants. Sleeping under such conditions would be risky, as the rats would often tear flesh from the legs and arms of those attempting to rest on the cold floor of the cell. However, the worst example of the rat torture is one that has become infamous in fiction and television, but is actually based upon reality. Rats are well known for their ability to chew through most things, and their sharp teeth can exert 24,000 pounds of pressure per square inch, enabling them to bite through wood, brick, and even metal. This impressive ability was put to use in a cheap and extremely effective torture method. A rat would be placed on the victim's exposed stomach and covered with a bucket or container. The bucket would then be heated, and as it got hotter and hotter, the rat trapped inside would begin to panic and seek out an escape route. Faced with flesh on one side or hot metal on the other, the rat would choose the path of least resistance and began biting its way through the victim's skin and into their flesh in a desperate bid to escape. The gnawing process could take some time, and death would not come quickly. Incredible pain would be coupled with the terrifying sensation of the large rodent frantically moving around inside you, as it continued to bite, scratch, and devour. The process would eventually result in death, and simply the threat of such a torture was likely to get all the information the interrogator required. During the Dutch revolt against Spain in 1568, the method has been documented as being used against prisoners taken in the conflict. A pottery bowl filled with rats would be placed upside down on the exposed body of the victim, and hot charcoal would be piled on top of the bowl. It was noted that the rats would, quote, gnaw into the very bowels of the victim in their frantic efforts to escape the burning heat. 
Rat torture is not just confined to centuries past, however. It was allegedly used in Chile by the regime of Augusto Pinochet between 1973 and 1990, as well as in Argentina between 1976 and 1983, and it will no doubt likely be used again somewhere in the world in the future due to its low cost, simplicity, and effectiveness. Number 3. Keel Hauling For much of history, life aboard a naval ship was a brutal and harsh existence. The captain of the ship was the king of his vessel, and many of the sailors toiling on board were not there willingly. Kidnapping and forced impressment into the navy were common, and punishments had to be severe to keep the men disciplined and working hard. Isolated in the middle of the ocean, the captain and his officers were vastly outnumbered. Mutiny was a very real danger, and discipline was enforced ruthlessly in an effort to keep order. The captain's word was law, and he held the power of life and death over his crew. Any man who broke one of the countless number of rules and regulations was liable to be punished in the most brutal fashion. Perhaps the most feared of these punishments was the practice of keel hauling. The victim would be stripped naked, have his legs weighted, and then be suspended from a rope that ran under the bottom of the ship and up the other side. At the sound of a cannon shot, he would be dropped into the water and dragged under the ship, across the hull, and over the keel, before finally being pulled up on the other side of the ship. Drowning was not the only danger that the man being keel hauled had to contend with, however. The ship's hull would likely be covered in razor-sharp barnacles, and his naked body would have been dragged at great speed across the jagged hull to reduce the risk of drowning. This would result in his skin being lacerated and shredded, chunks of flesh being carved off, and in some cases, limbs were lost. There are even accounts of men being decapitated during the ordeal. If the man survived the punishment, he would still have to contend with infections to the many deep cuts that now covered his body, and often the punishment would be repeated several times. The man's terrible scars would serve as a permanent reminder to him and other crew members as to the consequences of breaking the rules and disobeying the word of the captain. Although it's unknown exactly when the punishment first came into use, the earliest known example was found in an ancient Greek maritime code dated at 800 BC, which mentions keel hauling as a punishment for piracy. It later became widely used in European navies, especially in the 16th and 17th centuries, and it was not formally abolished in the Dutch navy until 1853. In fact, keel hauling was so feared that the term is still used today as a word to describe being harshly punished or given extreme discipline for a minor violation of rules. Number 2. The Blood Eagle Vikings have long been portrayed as powerful warriors and intrepid explorers who treated their enemies with savage cruelty. However, the Blood Eagle stands out in history as being one of the more shocking and disturbing practices used by the Norse. According to some sources, the Blood Eagle was a ritual killing in which the victim would first be tied up and held face down. The back would then be cut open, exposing the back of the ribcage, and one by one the ribs would be snapped free from the spine and pulled outwards so that they point away from the body, creating the appearance of a bloody and grisly pair of eagle's wings. Some sources even say that salt would be rubbed into the horrific wound to increase the amount of pain experienced and as a gruesome finale, the lungs would be pulled back from the exposed chest cavity and draped over the dying man's horrific bone wings while he slowly suffocated and bled to death. According to the sagas, this terrifying punishment was reserved for noblemen and was a very rare occurrence, and there seemed to be only two instances mentioned in Norse writings. The Orkney Inga saga, which is a 12th century Icelandic account of the Earls of Orkney, speaks of a blood eagle being carved into the back of a Viking Earl by his rival, which is described in the saga as being a sacrifice to Odin. In the tale of Ragnar's sons, the legendary Ivar the Boneless avenges the death of his father, Ragnar Lothbrok, by giving King Ayla of Northumbria a blood eagle. Ragnar had been shipwrecked on the English coast and captured by King Ayla before being executed by being thrown into a pit of vipers. King Ayla was subsequently captured by Ivor the Boneless after being defeated in battle, and is described as suffering a grisly fate, having the blood eagle carved into his back, his ribs cut from his spine, and his lungs ripped out. This Viking era stone carving also appears to depict a blood eagle ritual being carried out. The victim seems to be having his back cut open, while an eagle hovers behind him, in a scene that seems to closely resemble descriptions of what a blood eagle entailed. Whether or not blood eagles actually existed is still hotly debated by historians. 
It is possible that the stories have been misinterpreted or poorly translated, and it's worth remembering that the sagas were created by poets and perhaps designed to be used more as entertainment than for education. Though contemporary accounts of the ritual exist, and many references come from hundreds of years later from Christian sources, which may have been attempting to depict the pagan Vikings in a negative light, it's also unlikely that anyone could have survived for very long during a blood eagle, and it's been argued that such injuries would result in a quick death from shock and blood loss, or at least rapid unconsciousness. Despite this, similarly horrific executions have been carried out by humans since the dawn of time, so it's certainly within the realms of possibility that such a grisly fate did indeed befall some unfortunate souls. Number 1. The Boats The boats may not sound like a very intimidating name for a punishment, however what it entails is truly horrifying. It was a favourite method of punishment in ancient Persia, and was designed to inflict the most amount of suffering possible, and extend the victim's misery for as long as possible. In ancient times, death alone was not seen as a sufficient punishment for severe crimes. In fact, a quick death was viewed as merciful. Because of this, it seems that those in power at the time dedicated an inhuman amount of time and creativity into dreaming up the worst ways to punish their enemies. The victim would be stripped naked and his body enclosed within two small boats designed to fit precisely together, with just his head, hands and feet sticking out through holes. The boats would be nailed together, trapping the victim inside, who would then be force-fed milk and honey, as well as having the sticky mixture smeared over his face, feet and hands. He would then be floated out into the middle of a still lake, or simply left out in the sun. The sweet mixture would quickly attract swarms of flies and insects, which would cover the defenceless man's exposed skin, stinging and biting him, causing constant agony. The honey mixture would also keep him alive and nourished, prolonging his torture, and his excrement and urine would slowly build up inside the boats, gradually filling them, which would attract even more flies and insects. Over time, the constant swarms of insects would begin feeding on the victim while he was still alive, and flies would begin laying their eggs inside the boats, and even inside his flesh which was now turning putrefied. The victim would be fed the milk and honey each day, and have a fresh coat applied to his skin, and should he refuse to eat any more, his eyes would be pricked with a knife, until he became more cooperative. In this way he was kept alive for the maximum amount of time possible, until he finally succumbed to his injuries, sometimes after as much as two weeks of suffering, usually dying due to a combination of dehydration, septic shock, and infections caused by the wounds inflicted by all manner of insects burrowing into his flesh. One grisly account speaks of a young Persian soldier who had killed a claimant to the Persian throne in battle and was rewarded by the king on the condition that he told everyone that it was the king who landed the killing blow. However, the young soldier let the secret slip at a banquet and was punished via the boats by his furious king. The young man suffered for 17 days, laying in his own filth while his flesh slowly rotted and was consumed by endless numbers of insects and worms which would bury themselves into every orifice, slowly eating him alive from the inside as well as from the outside. After he finally expired, the upper portion of the boat was removed, revealing the grisly sight of his half-devoured body, covered in writhing swarms of worms, flies and insects, still gorging themselves on his corrupted flesh. So, there are my choices for five of the worst punishments in history, but let me know which punishments you would have included in the list in the comments below, and I'll see you again on the next video.